Hello everyone, it's Diane at Minerva. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. And today I'm going to share a sew along with you for this beautiful dress by Iso Sew Studio. And it's the Rivlin Ruffle Dress. We're going to be making version C, so that's the long version with all the tiers. And this particular pattern does come as a kit, so you'll have everything you need to get started. Now what we're using today is a Minerva exclusive viscose chalet. And this particular design is called Mystic Grove. I love this design with all the trees and it's such pretty colours. It's going to make a beautiful dress. Now remember to wash and prepare your fabric before you get started and also with this pattern it comes in two cup sizes. So you want to check your bust size inside with the guide before you get started to check which cup size for the pattern you need to cut. Now when you're certain that you have the perfect fit we're going to go and cut our pattern pieces together. So let's go and do that together now. Here we have our pattern pieces for our dress. So here we have the bodice back. You're going to cut one in fabric on the fold, the fold is here, and one in lining. Make a note of your markings and your darts. Here we have the centre panel now you need to make sure you cut this piece in the correct cup size. I'm cutting it in a D cup today and I'm making the size 14. So here we're going to cut one in fabric and one in lining. This is the straight grain here. Here's the bodice back panel. You're going to cut one in fabric and one in lining on the fold. The fold is here. And the front bodice panel, again one in fabric and one in lining, on the fold here. Here we have the front dress, so the bodice here, we're going to cut this two pieces, two pieces in fabric and two pieces in lining. The straight grain is this way and again you want to make sure that you cut the correct cup size. Make a note of your markings. Here we have the neck ruffle, you're going to cut two in fabric, the straight grain is this way. And here we have the shoulder ruffle, again cut two in fabric and the straight grain is this way. Make a note of this fold line, this broken line here and here. Here we have the skirt, so this is piece H. We're going to cut two pieces in fabric and the straight grain is this way. Make a note of the markings at the sides. Here we have the skirt middle, this time you're going to cut four pieces in fabric. Here we have the skirt bottom and now we're going to cut eight pieces in fabric. So bear in mind that our dress, the long version, has three tiers. This will vary if you're making other versions. Now we're ready to begin making our dress. So first of all you want to wind half of your thread onto your machine spool and check your machine needle is sharp. Now today we're using Sharps number 70, so this is a fine needle, perfect for this viscose chalet fabric and these are included in your kit. When you've done that, we're going to stitch in our darts to our back panel, so that's our first job. So first of all, look at your markings on your back bodice piece, so you have your notches at the bottom and your marking. Bring right sides together, so you're pinching it together at these two markings here and we're working towards this point here. We're stitching to a gradual V, don't come off too suddenly. And we're going to let our threads run free so that we can knot them. So knot the threads and push that knot down towards the point. Press your darts down flat and repeat on the other side. Next you're going to repeat this step on your lining piece. Now pin your bodice front to your bodice back at the shoulder seams. And now we're going to stitch it in place with a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. When you've done this, press the seam open. Now repeat with your lining pieces, pinning your front pieces to your back at the shoulder seam and stitch in place. 
Now stay stitch around the neckline of the bodice in the main fabric one centimetre away from the raw edge then when you've done this you're going to repeat that step on the lining this will just help the neckline stay put and not stretch out and again around the lining fabric now with right sides facing you're going to sew the two neck ruffle pieces together that's piece D at the short edge here you're going to do so with a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance then when you've done that you're going to press it open and flat now fold the ruffle in half lengthways and give it a press then when you've done this we're going to prepare the gathers so you want to be one centimetre away from the raw edge with a long stitch now we're going to stitch the whole length of the ruffle leave the ends running free and then when you've done this we're going to stitch another line of stitches a couple of millimetres away from that again the whole length of the ruffle this will create your stitches for pulling up your gathers and again beside it now pull on your gathering stitches and pin your ruffle around your neck. Now you want to make sure that you pull it until it is the same length as your neck opening and what I did was I found the halfway point at the back of the neck and you've got your halfway point on your ruffle where you join the seam here make sure that that lines up and I did each side to make sure that the gathers were even. Now as it pinned in place you're going to stitch that with a one centimetre seam. Now repeat these steps with your sleeve ruffle pieces. Fold it in half lengthways, give it a press and then we're going to stitch in place our gathering stitches with a long stitch. Two rows of gathering stitches. Now I've chosen to just overlock the edge on this also because I just find it just makes it easier when you're pulling the gathering stitches if you have any bits fraying out they do tend to get in the way. But make sure if you're doing this that you don't take anything off the edge, you just catch that overlocking stitch right on the edge of the fabric and also that you remark this halfway point here with chalk. Now pull on your gathering stitches and attach your sleeve ruffle between the notches at the front armhole and the back armhole. Now stitch that in place with a one centimetre seam. Now take the front panel, so that's piece G, and you're going to, with right sides facing, align the two top raw edges like this. Now we're now going to sew along here with a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance, then press the seam towards the lining and then understitch it. So open it out like this, press that seam towards that lining this way. Now understitch, so that's a few millimetres away from this seam. Then when you've done that, press wrong sides together like this. Now line up your centre front panel with your markings on your front bodice. Now do bear in mind that depending on which panel you've cut, whether you've cut for the high neck or the low neck, there are two different markings. So there's one for the high neck, which I have cut, and one for the lower neck. Line it up, place it like this, right sides facing on one side, and then we're going to stitch in place. Then we're going to flip it over and stitch it to the other side. Now you're going to attach the back bodice panel to the back bodice so it's best if you find your centre point and your centre point at the back here and here make sure you've got it the right way up also flip it over right sides facing and pin that in place when you've done that we're going to stitch that in place with a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance now prepare the gathers on the front bodice so you have a notch here going to the front here 
don't make any gathers on this front panel. So we're stopping here just before the ruffle stitching from here. Two lines of gathering stitches. One centimetre away from the raw edge. Now pin and stitch the lower back bodice panel lining to the lower back bodice piece. So that's this piece here. It's best if you find the centre back of both before pinning them in place. Now pull on the gathering stitches on your front bodice and then you're going to pin the lower front bodice to it like this. Now you want to make sure that you match up the notches here and also at the centre front and the gathers finished here just before the ruffle and then here at your notch. When you have it pinned in place, stitch in position with a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. Now on your front bodice lining pieces you want to press under 1.5 centimetres of the front neck edge just at the bottom at the base here with wrong sides facing like this. Then when you've done that you're going to stitch in place your gathering stitches on the lining the same way that you did on your front bodice main fabric. Two rows of stitching, use the notches as a guide. Then when you've done this we're going to attach the bottom bodice panel of lining to this. So you want to make sure that you mark the centre point and bear in mind that on this piece you're going to have a gap. You're going to have a gap in the centre where that centre panel goes on your main fabric. So pin it in position first of all. Now pin your lining all around your bodice like this on the inside. Match up your centre back, your shoulder seams and the notches at the panel at the front. You will need to pull the panel through so that you can continue pinning down the side of it like this. When you've done that we're going to stitch that in place. Now understitch your seam to your lining couple of millimetres away from the seam edge to stop it from rolling out. So the centre front panel G lining to the bodice. Now when you've done this you may find at the front that you need to put some hand stitches at either side here to hold it in place. Now roll up one side of your bodice like this so you lay it out flat and then you roll both lining and main fabric inwards like this. Try and get it as tight as you can, it's quite difficult with the air getting in. <laughs> and then when you've done that, you're going to flip this side outwards, this side outwards, and we're going to stitch around the armhole here. So this is all tucked inside. We're going to stitch all the way around it, understitch it, and then we'll push that to the outside and we'll do the other side. So the main thing is getting this in tucked in nicely. You can put a few pins in if you wish to keep it in place because we need to be getting into this armhole here you see. So it's up to you whether you add a few pins and we're now going to stitch round that armhole. Now open up your side seam and place them right sides together like this and we're going to stitch the side seam with a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. Now be sure it is the right side seam that you are joining at this point. Leave the other side free for now. Now join the top two panels of your skirt together, that's piece H at the right side seam as you wear it. Now sew two rows of gathering stitches along the top of your skirt panels. Now pull on your gathering stitches 
and attach it to your bodice like this. Now I found it's best if you mark the centre point like this and do the same on the back panel. Line up your side seams and pull on your threads in sections so that you can guarantee that it's equally di distributed. When you've done this we're going to stitch it in place. Next you're going to sew together the four panels for the middle skirt. Edge finish each seam as you do so. Now gather along the top of your middle skirt panels two rows of gathering stitches. Now pull on your middle skirt panel gathering stitches, pin it to your top skirt bottom like this. Make sure that it's evenly distributed, the gathers are all even, and then stitch it in place. Now you're going to sew all eight bottom strips together for your bottom tier of your dress, down the short edges. When you've done that, edge finish, and then gather along the top in the same way that you did your other panels. Now pin and stitch your bottom tier to your dress. It helps if you do this in sections, so divide it up along the bottom before pinning it in place. That way you'll get your gathers more even. Now you're going to sew in your invisible zipper, so change to either a zipper foot or an invisible zip foot. That's what I'm using today. This, these get right behind the teeth, so I would recommend getting one of these. Uh, they are really useful. But you can just use an ordinary zipper foot. You want your zipper face down. You want to make sure that the top teeth of the zip are aligned with the underarm seam. And make sure that you've marked and placed it on the seam allowance down the side. Now you want to be sewing right behind those teeth on the zipper foot. All the way down. Now it's up to you whether you do your seam to the bottom of the dress before or after you apply your zipper. Now I think it's best to put your zip in first and then close up that remaining bottom seam after because that gives you better access to either side of your invisible zipper. Now if you haven't already done so, sew the rest of the way down your side seam down to the hem. If you're doing this after you'll just need to tuck that zip to one side as you do so. Now on the inside of your dress, turn in the sides of the lining like this and pin them down the sides of your zip. And also turn under the lining at the bodice here, the lower bodice, and press it under and then pin that in position. So your dress seam where it attaches at the waist is pressed upwards and it's hidden behind this central panel here. Pin this in place, we're going to stitch it with hand stitches down this side and along this central panel here making sure that it's invisible on the other side we don't want stitches poking through so take your time with this part then when you've done that we're going to hem our dress now at the top of your zip you can add one of your hook and eyes which is in your kit behind the zip just here if you find it closes and you're happy with it as it is you don't need to add this in if you don't want to if you are adding it in, sew it directly behind the zip so that it catches at the top there. If you don't have a gap, as I said, you may not need it. When you've done this, we're going to press up 1.5 centimetres on the bottom of the hem and then again another 1.5 like this. When you've done that, we're going to hem that in place. You may wish to try your dress on before you do this just to check the overall length. So here is the finished dress. As you can see it's floor length. I think it looks lovely with the tears and the lovely ruffle detail at the neck. Well I hope you've enjoyed sewing along. I think this is a really pretty dress. I love all the details and I think the tears give it a really dramatic feel. So it could really be a special occasion dress this one. 
It's also a really nice feature that it's got the different cup sizes. So I made this particular dress in a size 14 with a D cup. So do remember to check your cup sizes with the instructions in the booklet before you cut out your pattern pieces. Have you made this pattern before? Please let us know in the comments below along with any photographs. We always love to see what you've been making. And remember to take a look at Minerva Craft Club to get 10% off all your orders for a whole year. Well that's all from me for today, but I hope to be back soon with another sew along for you. Thank you so much for watching, bye for now.